let's start with how you have the best job in the world. Uh, we are going into season 36. Did you have any idea when you first got this gig to host Amazing Race that it would have such an impact on your life? No, I did not. I I did from the beginning feel like it was a dream job, that it really um, had all the things that I love about working in television, meeting people, traveling. Um, so, but no, I, I never saw a time where we would be talking about a season 36. In fact, I wasn't sure we would get to number two. I bet. I bet. I mean, that's with every job. You just never know. I, and you truly are an adventurer. You live your life like that. Was that always in you? I and mean, then you just locked into the greatest adventure job? Or do you think Amazing Race pulled it out of you? No, I was always an adventurer. And um, all the jobs that I'd done before Amazing Race were all um, adventurous type shows. The very first show I hosted when I was 19 was where people wrote in and got me to do things. I, there were two other hosts and people would literally write in and say, um, you know, we want to see Phil and Amber or or Ollie, who was the other host, uh, go skydiving or we want to see them diving or we want to see them doing something. So, um, no, I, I and, and ever since I was a little kid, I was always breaking my arm and I broke <laughs> my arm. I think I broke this arm twice, this one three times, fingers broken noses, split my head, fell out of a few trees in my time. Um, I I don't want to say I was accident prone as much as I was adventure prone. And so always trying new and different things. And so I got a lot of scars um, all over and had a lot of broken arms as a result of my early adventures as a kid. <laughs> so this was just meant to be. It was just meant to be. I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like it was definitely meant to be. Well, you've really um, started to, it seems like you've started to enjoy messing with the second to the last team as they approach the mat. How has this evolved for you over the years? Well, I think with the new 90s, it's allowed uh, people to see maybe more of my my playful side. Mm -hmm. Um when the show's cut super tight, a lot of stuff has to get cut out of the show. We don't get to show as much of the destination or as much of the characters um, as sometimes we would like to. And so by going to 90s, 90 minute episodes, it really has allowed us the opportunity to open it up. And so it's allowed me to maybe, um, or, or allowed the editors to be able to use some of the more playful stuff that I do. Um, Cause I do love, messing with them and having fun with them, not at them, but with them. Yeah. Do you have a favorite type of team? I like teams that are super fans of the show. Mm -hmm. Ones that are incredibly enthusiastic, like Danny and Angie this season, super fans. And I love that energy because I know that amazing race fans and people who have always wanted to be on the show, uh, I just know how enthusiastic they are about the show. So I I would say that they're my favorites just because mm -hmm. I feel like they're probably the most appreciative in terms of the opportunity that we're able to give them. Right. And after all these years, are you able to sort of predict how teams are going to perform? I wish. I wish I was better at it. Um, <laughs> I'm not very good at it. But um, I think the fact that none of us, because we all sort of, you know, wager a little bit about <laughs> who's going to do well. I think the fact that none of us are ever right speaks to the reason the show works is that it is really, truly unpredictable. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm not very good at it, but I certainly have an opinion. <laughs> is there a favorite type of challenge that you have? I like the ones that are uh unique to that particular place i like when we do something where like if you remember last season when we were in vietnam and they were making the rice paper and and they were they they had to take this rice batter and and then lay it out over a hot plate 
and then peel it off the hot plate and then lay it out to dry. I love challenges like that. Or when we were in Kochi in India and we saw these huge fishing nets that date back to Chinese times. They, they actually, uh, that that um, mechanism that they use where they have this giant net, like, oh, 30 feet wide by 30 feet long, basically a 30 foot square. Um, they would drop it down into the water and then capture the fish and then lift it up and it would pull the fish together. I like when you, when we go and do things that are unique to that place and we are able to show something that you wouldn't ordinarily get to see. And is there a challenge or maybe a destination that you keep suggesting that you're hoping the race will do someday? Well, there's a few destinations that for one reason or another haven't made it into the fold at this point, um, not because of a lack of enthusiasm, but sometimes like for instance, Nepal is a very challenging place to get in and out of. And logistics obviously play a big role in 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 the choices that we make for where we're going and what we're doing. It's it's difficult to get in and out of a place like Nepal. There aren't, you know, four or five flights a day for, to, to major airport destinations. So um yes, definitely got a few of those on the cards. Um We've been to over a hundred countries, I think, and on Amazing Race, and and there's still plenty. You know, we get to some new ones this season with Barbados mm -hmm. and the Dominican Republic. Anytime we can get somewhere new and different, I, I think is really exciting. Absolutely, we're also taking a little uh, jump back in time with this season, uh, back to some COVID protocols, including the chartered plane. Yeah. I have to imagine that's a different for you as well, because we don't, you don't typically travel with the teams, but you do on the chartered plane. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. I do find myself in the regular seasons. I do find myself occasionally on the same flights with teams, but a lot of times that's when, because we're getting behind, I try to stay ahead of them. Um, it's not always possible, but yes, it, it was very, a very different experience. Um, being on a charter and um you know I, I remind fans that if it hadn't been for the charter and if it hadn't been for us being able to isolate ourselves from exposure then we wouldn't have been able to make the race at all so that was one of the compromises that came with following the covid protocols but better than not having any races at all Absolutely. Did you were you able to sit on the charter plane and sort of observe the the teams in the middle of the race as opposed to on the mat after the leg is over? Yeah, I mean, I do get to see them on any given course. Um, there are times, a lot of times, where I'm uh, at a destination shooting an introduction to, let's say, the paper challenge, and. I'm being told that a team is coming. I got to hurry up and finish the introduction. And as I'm packing up there, a team is running in. And so I, there are moments throughout the shooting where I do actually get to observe them in person. But yeah, definitely got to see that um, just being on the plane, being able to mm -hmm. see them and, and having more time to interact with them in the travel part of the of the race. I read that there is a medical emergency in our first task. Is that correct? Yeah, occasionally people will fall over um, or graze themselves or something like that. But it wasn't, uh, I wouldn't classify it as an emergency as much as just a little first aid. Okay. Bound to, bound to happen. Yes, Stay okay. Home. Good to know. Good to know. Everyone's mostly safe. Okay, great. So we're about to watch the premiere episode. What do we, what do you want us to know about this new season? Well, I, I just want to get across the point that our show is unique. And one of the reasons it's unique is that it is a show of surprises and I've struggled for a long, long time to answer the question from so many people, which is what's new and different about this season. And I've been always racking my brain about how to answer that. Um, because I know why people ask the question because they want to separate 
one season from another season, what's new and different. And I would say what's new and different is everything is new and different. When you watch a dancing show or a singing show or a cooking show, what's not new and different is the studio or the setting where they do the cooking or the dancing or the singing and what they're actually doing, singing, dancing, or cooking. On Amazing Race, nothing could be further from the truth. What's new and different is everything. When they rip that clue, they could be singing, they could be dancing, they could be cooking, they could be flying, they could be riding a donkey, they could be uh, snorkeling, they could be making bread, they could be mixing up rice, picking rice, picking grapes, picking tea leaves. Every envelope is a surprise. Every clue, every aspect of the show is new and different. So I'm using that as a way to answer the most frequently asked question that I get asked, which is what's new and different? Absolutely everything is new and different. Absolutely. We got a new cast. That's so exciting. We've got new countries, new tasks. Uh, I think that's what we love about Amazing Race. And we come back for every year after year. And you're so right. We're grateful that you were able to uh, make these seasons during a really difficult time. Uh, we're just happy that we get to watch it. That's what me and my community say. Well, I'd like to thank you for, uh, Letting everybody know in your community that the show is back on, 90-minute episodes, two new countries in Barbados and the Dominican Republic, and expect that everything will be new and different on this season, just like every other season of Amazing Race with a fantastic new cast. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Of course.